Hi there. Come right on in. This is Home Keepers, and we are so glad to have you. You are welcome in our home. And uh, we, we're welcoming you from uh, Clearwater, Florida. And guess what? It's cold here. But I know we can't complain because some of you good people who write to us, you know, from up north. And, and I had a gentleman on yesterday from uh, Toronto, Ontario, Canada. So we can't complain. But whatever the weather is in your part of the world, we are so glad you're here. And you will be if you'll just stick with us. Uh, you know, sometimes we get an opportunity in the middle of the week to sit down and talk to a wonderful guest, but we don't have time to do the whole program. So I do the interview ahead of time, and you regular viewers are very much aware of that. Well, I, I did one uh, just a few days ago with uh, Mohammed Amin Faridi from Iran. And I just uh, watched that interview a while ago, you know, before I show it to you, and I, I hope you'll just stay tuned. This is an opportunity for education. Uh, he talks about Islam in a way that uh, they don't talk about it in America because they say it's, it's a religion of peace, not true. Also, um, there's an underground revival going on in Iran, and the fact that when there's a male in the family that is killed as a martyr, they celebrate it. It is one opportunity for education, so stay with us all the way. I'm going to join Stephanie, we're going to make spinach, artichoke, zucchini bites. And these are very good for people that are kind of on a diet, but very, very satisfying. Before I join her though, let me again remind you, we're offering you the Daniel Plan uh, by Rick Warren and a couple of doctors. As I mentioned before, it was on the New York Times bestseller list for uh, quite a long time. And it offers you a plan for life, which includes focus and faith, not only diet and exercise, uh, because we are made up of uh, mind, body, and spirit. And when you get them all in the right groove, good things happen. You can order it by calling 1-800-229-0059 or the address, Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758. And we'll be glad to get it out to you. We're going out as we speak. Well, hello. Hi, I'm excited about this one. This one's low carb. And she picked it out. It. <laughs> she picked it out, and it looks wonderful. I don't but, want to do any more taco bakes, so I'm going to start printing out recipes. No. <laughs> but the, the, the big thing is she's going to get a vitamin B12 shot and then yes. watch out world. I'm going to be like the flash around here. Bing, ding, ding, ding. Watch. Mm -hmm. Yep. And that was ordered by my doctor. It wasn't like I wanted to go and get it. Well, so, uh, yeah. I want to see the difference in her, and if she really, you know, she really got you the might be able to tell. vim, vigor, and vitality, I will go get one, too. Yep. Okay, so we have zucchini. You're mm -hmm. cutting up for me in mm -hmm. half-inch little circles. Mm -hmm. I have a half of a um, block of cream cheese. I have two tablespoons of sour cream. I have two-thirds cup of mozzarella shredded lots of flavor going so into much this. flavor i have a quarter cup of freshly grated well it's not freshly grated really but it's parmesan. parmesan i have a half a can of artichoke hearts that mm. were rinsed and drained and i so probably good. cut up pretty this is going to be so delicious mm -hmm. a half a cup of frozen spinach that's been now make sure you get all the liquid out of there yeah. or you're just going to have some runny greenness in your um oven two garlic cloves chopped up and salt and pepper that's it super simple but it's going to be super delicious it smells good in here that's salt for sure and pepper so i'm just going to mix this all up i had softened the cream cheese a little bit to make it a little bit easier so we have parchment paper on the on the pan mm -hmm. we have zucchini rounds and i'm just going to take like a tablespoon of this and put it on the top of each one we're going to bake them at 400 degrees for about 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. Super simple, great appet great, um, great hors d'oeuvre. Hors d'oeuvre, I was going to say. Well, yes. also, I was telling Susan, I would might dip those in marinara. Well, and you know what I thought about? I thought if I had crackers this morning, I probably would have just dipped crackers in here, which would have totally blown the no-carb <laughs> <laughs> So I was so glad that I didn't even search for crackers. Mm -hmm. I just walked away. And... Uh, Trying We're, to be good. You know, while she's getting vitamin B12 shots and her her doctor is calling her. Having a fitness center call. Having a fitness center call. 
We're going to do a few of these recipes. Yes, I need help. Probably a lot of you, you know, you're facing the same situations. Yeah. Okay, so you just take like a tablespoonful, put it right on top. That's it. And then look how lovely those are. <gasps> That's going to be delicious. Make yes. sure you get all of the liquid out of your spinach. I'm going to eat really. mine with a fork because they're still very Me too. warm. Well, but, that because uh, I have lipstick. Mm -hmm. I don't want to get lipstick all over. Mm -hmm. Okay, Ooh, so I, I'm ready to taste. Look at mm -hmm. look at that mm -hmm. loveliness right there. Okay. Uh -huh. Pardon my reach. Mm -hmm. I need to get a fork in mm -hmm. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's hot. Yeah, I can. It's, it's hot. We should have taken them out of the oven a minute. Mm -hmm. mm. My goodness. They are delicious. I'm not kidding. I could sit down and eat a whole plateful. That is flavorful. Mm -hmm. So good. Mm -hmm. You want this recipe. Mm -hmm. And that zucchini cooked up nicely. I was afraid it was going to be too crunchy, although you like crunchy. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's good. It's really good. Now you could... Um, you could probably time the mm. zucchini for any kind of. She's having a moment. Mm -hmm. That's delicious. Well, okay, she's got her zucchini bites and she's yep. going to get a uh, vitamin B12 shot. Watch out, world. Watch out, world. On the next world. program, we'll. <laughs> on the next program, we'll see how you're doing. The next program's like next week, so let's she, not have any. She high, might be a real so. <laughs> energizer bunny, right? just hopping around here. We'll see. Hope so. Well, I think you want this um, recipe. That information is coming up on your screen. Uh, take note of it. Uh, we love email, but we also love getting your snail mail. So either way, we'll be glad to get it to you. And after that information, uh, you will meet my guest, who was here a few days ago. Um, Mr. Faridi is his name. Stay with us. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, you may receive it by contacting us through social media as listed on the screen. When requesting a copy through the mail, be sure to include a self-addressed stamped envelope. Thank you, and please know we always appreciate hearing from our viewers. All right, welcome to Homekeepers. I'm so glad to have you. Glad to be here. And what a story. I really kind of just want you uh, to tell it because we can see where Islam is making inroads mm -hmm. all over the world. And uh, you were born into it uh, in Iran, right? Correct. Uh, how, how many years were you? A Muslim. In, well, in Iran. So, um, I was born in 1984, and uh, I was a, a devout Muslim for 22 years. And as a Christian in the country of Iran, I lived three years. And as a Christian, I lived in another Muslim country for three years. That was 28 years of my life as a Muslim, as a as as an a Christian, in two countries of Iran and Turkey. And fin finally, I made uh, I made it to America. Praise God. Nothing like America. Nothing like America. <laughs> And uh, you would probably celebrate the most. Uh, Especially 4th of July and Thanksgiving is <laughs> my uh, favorite holidays. Now, how did you accept the Lord living in Iran? Well, um, a friend talked to me. He was himself a, a convert. There's a revival going in Iran. Now it's almost 20 years since uh, early uh, 1990s. There's this revival going on and if you put the fastest growing evangelical church in the world, the Iranians are number one. So we have the fastest growing church per capita anywhere in the world. So I'm a part of that revival. Friend of mine that we grew up since age six, he was a convert himself. And after I finished my military service uh, with the Revolutionary Army of Iran, and I was um, dreaming about a war, dreaming about fighting with Israelis, or Americans. Uh, he talked to me about the ultimate sacrifice that Jesus uh, has given for us, the atoning uh, sacrifice of Jesus. And that message of the gospel was so good that brought me to my knees. Yes, and uh, we'll get into it, but you, you have paid a price for that. But uh, going back to your time in Iran, um, can a cr Christian be executed there? I mean, is, is all this Christianity under 
It's all of this movement is underground. All of it is illegal. And um, actually, last week we had 110 Christians arrested in Iran. And um, uh, many of those brothers and sisters are asking us to pray for them the time that they're in jail. Many of them will be uh, prosecuted for it. And if they keep the faith, ultimately they will be executed. According to Sharia of Islam, the Islamic uh, law of um, Iran, if you become an apostate, you must be executed. Wow. Religious freedom is really something that our founders knew. That's of right. course, God mm -hmm. inspired them. And so was it just the simple story of Jesus and, and that, that he did give his life that just grabbed you after believing in Muhammad for a couple of decades, right? Correct. So I had no other choices. So I was born into a devout Muslim family and I was born uh, uh, during the war between the two countries of Iran and Iraq. And uh, actually my uncle, two of my cousins died in, those, in, the, in that war. And they called our generation the generation of war. And uh, my uncle was the uh, idol of the family. So as a Muslim, I wanted to, fo uh, to follow his path. And my mom was helping me to do that because she, she's a devout and that's, that's a uh, mom does, cultivates this culture in the Muslim family that the sons, not the daughter, the sons becomes martyrs and jihadists for Islam. So it's a badge of honor. It is a badge of honor. Well, I remember when my uh, uncle died or was killed in the war as a martyr, as a family, we didn't grieve. We celebrated it. He fulfilled the greatest honor as a Muslim man. And they put uh, his, uh, the, they paint the wall of the mosque uh, in honor of him. And, and, and uh, our family became the family of martyrs. We received a lot of uh, benefits from the government. Really? Yes, you get welfare for it. And uh, they turned the alley that we lived on to our last name. So we, we were honored in our community, in our society. On the top of that, when we had other relatives and families, members and friends come over, we would brag about it. We have shed blood for Islam, and what that's, you that's have done. And that's what you wanted to be. And that's what I wanted to be, because I wanted to honor my family. In, in the West, we are an individualist culture. It's a culture of innocent and guilt. In our culture, honor and shame, you do anything to honor your family and martyr them is the greatest thing as a son you can do to your, to your family. Now, I understand that you and your family are not on the best terms even mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. How did they respond when they found out you were serving the Lord? Well, um, one day I was praying to Jesus in my room and my dad, I wasn't going to mosque anymore. And my dad was suspicious, came to the room and found out about it. And he said, what are you doing? And I told him I'm praying. And he said, who are you praying to? Because I wasn't going through the ritual of Islam mm -hmm. to pray. And uh, he said, what are, who are you praying to? And I said, I'm praying to Jesus. And he said, why is that? Why, why are you praying to Jesus? I said, because he's alive. He can hear me. And he actually responds. And um, on the other hand, he showed the picture of Muhammad in our home. I said, why not Muhammad? And I told him he's dead. A dead person cannot hear. A dead person cannot respond. It, it, make, it made uh, what I was saying, it was logical, mm -hmm. but he did not like it. And he was a strong man. He picked me off the, uh, uh, picked me, grabbed me, picked me off the floor and started beating me. And I ran away from home. And that was the first introduction to uh, a religion of peace for me. Yeah, the religion of yes. peace. Right? Uh, and then uh, you, you're in Bible college now? Yes, correct? I'm in uh, Karis Bible College, second year. Mm -hmm. And, but you're really already in the ministry because when you go out and tell this story, it, sure. it's a, a great tool of ministry. I mean, I was captivated by it the first time I read it. Uh, as you, uh, you find people like myself, they're very, very curious about the mm -hmm. inner workings mm -hmm. of uh, Islam mm -hmm. because it's been sold to the American people as a religion of peace. And yet it's whatever, their Ten Commandments or whatever they have. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, kill the infidels, mm -hmm. which would be me mm -hmm. and everybody else in this building. Correct. So, well, uh, Islam is introduced as the religion of peace. And um, I, I never heard of that as a Muslim. But when I came to the West, um, some politicians, some people with agendas, they're giving it a new face that it's not as bad as what we think it is. So 
Um, Islam means, the word Islam, if you translate it literally on Google or anywhere, it means submissions, mean, meaning surrender. But in, in the West, everything is uh, changed. The name are changed to be uh, uh, meaning or seeming something different than, than what really are. So um, I grew up as a Muslim. I remember I was praying to Allah in Arabic. We Iranians speak Farsi. I had to speak in a, in a different language to this God. And I to asked Muhammad, you had to speak a different to language? To Allah, Allah, because he does not understand any other language You're than, than uh, Arabic. If you think about it now, uh, I speak Farsi, I speak Turkish, and I speak English. I know more languages than the God of Islam. Yeah, and Jesus understands every one of them. Amen. There, there, there is no, the God, of, the God of Christianity is not bound by race, by nationalities, by, by languages, but uh, speaking to the God of Islam in Arabic, I went to my mom as a, as a kid and I asked her, Mom, can I speak to God in Farsi, in my mother tongue? And my mom said, a good Muslim does not ask question, he surrenders. Submission. She knew the meaning of Islam. But when I came to the West, they said, no, 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 the meaning is not submission, it's not surrender, it's peace. Which oh, okay. is a lie that uh, it's putting out uh, through our media, through our politicians and, and so on and so forth. And I, I mentioned at the top of this uh, conversation that uh, you've paid a price. I believe you said you speak to your mother once in a while, but mm -hmm. for the most part, um, you are no longer really part of the family. I'm not. And mm -hmm. in Christianity, if our children stray, we continue to love them Correct. and pray for them. There's, there's a huge, huge uh, difference. Now, how did you get to the United States? Well, uh, after I converted and became a Christian, I was two times threatened. My life two times was threatened. First with my uh, own family, my cousins, they threatened to kill me. Mm -hmm. And they said, you betrayed Islam and you'll pay for it. And then the second time, I was working for a taxi agency and I had my New Testaments on, uh, on the dashboard. And uh, ha whoever would ask about the book and what, what, what is it, uh, it's an illegal book in our uh, country. so. Um, People wanted to know, so I would get a chance to uh, share the gospel with them. Praise God, many, many got saved in my taxi. However, after a while, some of those uh, Muslims that they didn't like my message, they reported me to the government, right. and the government was after me, and they, uh, they came to the agency once, and they told my boss that uh, they were looking for me, and uh, uh, glad that day I was out. I was driving on the street, so I wasn't out. And then when I came back, the, uh, the owner of the agency said, they're after you, they have already reported you. And if they get the, their hand on you, not that they only hurt you, they will hurt your family. And so. uh, you're a true, authentic um, religious refugee here. Mm -hmm. So welcome, we're glad to have you. <laughs> Thank you, glad to be here. Uh, let's talk a little bit about how Islam is creeping, really taking over the world. Mm -hmm. It has totally changed uh, Great Britain, Europe. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, for many reasons, um, especially Germany, they, they just opened the doors and said, mm -hmm. come on in. Uh, but also the birth rate. Mm -hmm. The um, Islamic people mm -hmm. are going to have as large a family probably as they can, mm -hmm. where uh, the Westerners have really, uh, I think two, maybe two children in, in the United States would be average. I, I don't have that for mm -hmm. sure. But uh, I read in one country in, I believe it was in Europe, there was almost zero Correct. Po population growth. I, for, 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 for the kind of ministry I do, I travel a lot to Europe and to the Middle East. Mm -hmm. I cannot mention many of those countries I go to. But when, when I first time I landed in England, I really thought, I really felt that I was in Islamabad. I was in Pakistan. Really? It, um, th th the uh, Muslim population of London has already taken over the majority. That's 51%. And that's why we have so many Muslim elect elected to the government of, of, uh, of England or the Great Britain. So, um, and the, uh, um, the thing is with the birth rate that average Westerner families in the, in the Western Europe, they're having 1.1. That's about it. So every couple, if they get married, they may have one kid. 
that's average. But the same in the Western Europe, the Muslim families in Western Europe, like countries like Pac uh, uh, France, Germany, Sweden, Finland, Norway, England, all of those families, th their average child is about 5.6. The very thing that they got our uh, It Western only takes one generation and take it over. That is it. And the very thing that we were using to benefit our families to have more children so you have more benefits, now they're taking it. Our enemies are taking advantage of that. And that's the weakness of our, our mm -hmm. uh, um, policies. Uh, when you came to the United States, uh, were there a lot of surprises? And if there were any, is anything really prominent? <laughs> well, when, when, when I arrived here six years ago, I was uh, in my greatest culture shock of all time. And uh, everything is, um, in America is so vast and stretched that I was so overwhelmed and I felt very small. Because of the materialism? Because, because everything is larger here. The streets are, the people are, the, the cars are, the houses are. So coming from the Middle <laughs> East, in a, uh, living in a compact city, uh -huh. I mean, um, where I grew up in Tehran, we have 15 million population. In a very, it's a very compact, very small, very polluted city. But when I was in Los Angeles, we have about 15 million. But the, the land is much greater. The streets are much uh, bigger. So uh, the biggest culture shock for me was that uh, here everything is uh, like uh, times four, times five. <laughs> it's, it's bigger. And... Uh, I remember when I went to the uh, f first time I went to Vaughn's or Ralph. It's some sort of a, a grocery store in the, in, the, in the West Coast. I went to get uh, a bag of chips for myself. I was overwhelmed. It took me two hours. <laughs> there are so many varieties of chips, sizes, flavors. And I, was, and I was tired picking up a bag of <laughs> chips. I was overwhelmed by it because we don't have that many options. Kind of fun, though, wasn't it? Uh, it's funny now, but it wasn't fun at all. I, w I want to go back to this friend who led you to the Lord. Mm -hmm. Was he a uh, Muslim? He was Muslim too. And how did he find out about the Lord? So um, uh, his aunt one day was sitting in a taxi and uh, the driver of the taxi was a Christian man from the Armenian Iranian. Uh, community of Iran and he uh, he talks to her about Jesus and gives her a Bible a New Testament in Farsi and she receives the Lord she becomes f the first one from that family it was her she becomes a, a Christian and then she talks to him he becomes a Christian and he talks to his own family first so the whole family were saved and then out of that family they, they talked to me and I was one of the fruits. Yeah, that's exactly the way it's supposed to work. That's right. Uh, I praise God for mass evangelism and all mm -hmm. those good things, anything that brings them. To, but this is, this is the original plan. Th this is the very organic, very underground movement yeah. that is happening. Yeah. So. That's, uh, that's what makes you know the gospel is absolutely real. It's powerful. Mm -hmm that through a conversation mm -hmm. or something, the Holy Spirit just taps you on the shoulder and said, this is it. Uh, Arsene, when, when I heard the gospel, I tried to argue it. I tried to uh, resist it. But when the message of the gospel was uh, communicated to me clearly, the word of God pierced my heart. Mm -hmm. And it went beyond my intellect, beyond my reasoning, beyond my understanding. Out of desperation, I fell on my knees. Praise God. And I asked, awesome. what do I need to do? And the Iranians are the most open people now anywhere in the world. So if I remember I was in Turkey um, uh, uh, a few years ago and we were handing out Bibles to the Iranians that they were going to Iran uh, via train. And I, as, I, as, as they looked at the, we, we have ra uh, gift wrapped these Bibles and they opened it up and they said, Oh, this is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Can I have more? Can I take some oh, more? Yes. This is this is how the Iranians are receptive, and uh, it's something amazing is happening, and we should be a part of it. Absolutely, and I I am so glad you can bring this good news mm -hmm. to my viewers. We are out of time, but I sure invite you to come back sometime. Of course. I, I think uh, so many Americans are really 
interested mm -hmm. in this. And of course, nothing proves the power of God like Amen. what you've just told Amen. us. Amen. So God bless you. Hey, you stay with me. I have a couple things to say before we have to say goodbye. Arthelene would like you to keep the following information handy. You may contact Homekeepers by writing to Homekeepers, P.O. Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758, or go to www.rippy.org. Remember, we always enjoy hearing from our viewers, and we thank you for your support. Okay, I again want to offer you that wonderful book, The uh, Daniel Plan. And the genesis of it comes from the Word of God when uh, Daniel was instructed on how he and his uh, friends should eat and the great outcome from that uh, direction from the Lord. And so that's kind of the, the basis of it. But, oh, it goes way beyond that. And a total plan to really improve your life. And it really lines it up with the Word of God the whole thing. So uh, for that gift of $23, which includes your shipping and handling, we'll get it to you. The information is on the screen for either credit cards or if you want to write to us. Either way, it's fine. I was uh, thinking uh, a lot of you in the audience uh, have similarities to my life that we were born in America, uh, perhaps found out about the Lord at a young age and when you hear a testimony like that, it just is so important because we've taken so many things for granted. Uh, maybe we take the cross for granted sometimes, the whole message of Christianity, take it for granted. And then you hear somebody like my guest who tells you how much it means and, and the forces that are trying to destroy this country to make it like the country he just left. And he is truly a religious um, refugee. And also uh, that we take America for granted. I, I was so astounded uh, to ask him, you know, what did you notice when you came here? He said, everything is so big. God has blessed this nation. You cannot doubt it. But I have great concerns now for a nation that thinks it's all right to kill babies in their mother's womb and that thinks same-sex marriage is okay. Those are an abomination to the Lord. We better think about it very, very carefully. Got to go now, but please remember there's no higher calling than that of a homekeeper. God bless you. If you should miss a homekeeper's program, you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN programs and then on homekeepers.